Chiefs Kingdom, we got a lot to cover here on the Kansas City Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jay Sanders, and now you can see we've got a lot to go through. We've got injury news on Jarek McKinnon talking about the latest with him. We've got four signings that Chiefs have made late here in this season to Futures Contracts. We'll tell you all about that and what exactly that means. Along with, we're going to talk about our opponent this Saturday, the Dolphins, as they got some extra fire, firepower before they head to Kansas City this Saturday in that wild card matchup. Now, obviously, this Saturday, a cold game and a game that we have played once before this season in Germany with the Chiefs winning by seven points, 21 to 14. But I have to know your confidence level as we sit right now on this Thursday. We're coming up on the game. What are you thinking? Are you less confident and more confident? I want you to give me a number in the comment section down below. One is least confident. Ten is most confident. I want you to get in the comment section. What is your confidence level on this Chief squad beating the Miami Dolphins in the wild card matchup here on Saturday evening. Now, if you're looking for a place to watch it, you know, you don't have Peacock, and you know, obviously you didn't win those Charles O'Minahue three month subscriptions. I'm sure most of you've entered. Well, it's okay. We got you covered because we're going to have a live watch party where we'll have play by play, live updates, stats, everything you need to know along with a lot of fun mixed in as well. So make sure you join me. We're going to have a fun time on Saturday evening watching the Chiefs hopefully take down the Dolphins and advance to the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. So join us. We'll be live around 6 p.m. Central time. We'd certainly love to have you there. Let's get into today's show, starting with Jarek McKinnon and what exactly the update is. So if you don't remember, McKinnon was placed on IR back on December 24th. But since then, we've really had no updates before he got placed right after the, right, right prior to that Raiders game. Since then, it was kind of quiet. We didn't exactly know what the future held and if he was going to be able to return in the playoffs should the Chiefs make a, a few rounds in. Well, that kind of hope got diminished yesterday with this tweet from Matt Derrick, who says that Chiefs running back Jarek McKinnon underwent surgery for a core muscle injury on January 2nd, making it unlikely he will return for the postseason as... It's a tough blow. I mean, in one sense, you love to have McKinnon out on the field, but I think if you look at this from a further angle, you now only have two running backs in your starting three, and Clyde, I don't know how exactly you're going to go with that. You got Pacheco. He's going to be the workhorse back, but now you don't have that safety valve in the third down back of Jarek McKinnon. That will now fall to Clyde Edwards-Alaire or the Michael P. Ryan, who both are on the active roster as we stand currently. But the bigger story surrounding this is not just him missing the poten potential missing the rest of the playoffs and the rest of the season. But it's also maybe the end to his career here in Kansas City. Now, if you don't know, he is a free agent coming up here in the 2024 offseason. And obviously, there's a lot of question marks with Brett Veach trying to make that salary cap as best as possible with the Chiefs. You know, we got $30 million right now. If you cut MVS, you could probably get around $12 million with that. But are you going to sign Chris Jones? LeJarrius Sneed's going to require some money. Willie Gay, you're going to keep him. Is McKinnon going to fall on that list lower? Or higher? Well, that's where we see. Now, we'll talk about if it's the end or not probably throughout the offseason. But I do want to take a quick look at his three seasons here in Kansas City because overall, he has had an amazing career here. And honestly, I have to think that McKinnon has been one of those guys that is a staple with this Chiefs team over the past three years. His rushing yards, his receiving yards, and his touchdowns all listed for you right there. And you can tell in 2022 was the real year he kind of popped out of his shell Given the whole Pacheco was a rookie, Clyde Edwards-Alaire was kind of falling out of that first round, kind of draft slot. You didn't really see that from him anymore. That was the year he came alive. This year, you thought the same thing was going to happen when Isaiah Pacheco got that concussion, got that leg injury, and it was kind of four-week span. But then McKinnon injured his groin, which he had had problems with earlier in the season. And unfortunately, this time, it was more severe, obviously requiring surgery. That now has taken him out for most likely the rest of the season. Uh, postseason, basically. So I have to ask this question, though. I know that McKinnon has been here for three years. He's been a guy who, if you think Kansas City Chiefs for the past two, three years, you kind of think of Jarek McKinnon. I got to be honest. I mean, he's one of the guys who you just understand is on the Chiefs. He kind of just has always felt like a Chief to me. But do you want him back? I think that's the bigger question. Is he worth the money you're going to spend? I think he won't be worth that much, probably around maybe two, three million dollars a year. Well, it, it kind of just depends on what his market value is across the league. I mean, given you have Isaiah Pacheco, given you have Clyde edwards Lair, it, it's kind of going to be dependent on what Brett Veach wants to spend and if he's allotting a lot of money to McKinnon, if he's allotting a little amount of money, kind of what his plans are. But I want you to let me know in the comment section down below this question, do you want the Chiefs to sign back Jarek McKinnon in this offseason? Type Y for yes if you'd like the Chiefs to sign him back. Type in for no if you're thinking, I'm good. 
I've seen what McKinnon has, and uh, unfortunately, I'm just not willing to spend that money. Get in the comment section, why for yes in for no. If you ask me, I would love to have him back. I think that this running back room as a whole is one of the most underrated running back rooms in the NFL. We've kind of talked about it throughout this season, more or less over the past couple weeks, but especially after that Clyde Edwards-Lair breakout game against the Patriots, I like one through three here. I like Pacheco as the workhorse back. I like McKinnon as the third down receiving back. And I like Clyde Edwards-Alaire as kind of that change of pace back to get in there and be somewhat of a different style of running than McKinnon or Pacheco. Pacheco runs like a five-year-old going to get candy. McKinnon runs outside on a lot of times getting the stretches, getting those little maybe wide, or excuse me, running back screens. And then Clyde, he's kind of a mixture of the two. He can run like with his whole body. He can also be sneaky and move. I mean, he's a smaller guy. He's shifty. So I like this running back room, and honestly, I think it's very underrated in this NFL room. Of course, you also have LaMichael P. Ryan, who has kind of stepped in here as well and played pretty well. He was also active for that Chiefs versus Dolphins game in Germany. Did not see the field, though. I would have to think that'll probably be a similar situation this week unless there is an emergency situation where Pacheco or Edwards Alaire gets injured. All right, coming up on our second half of today's show, we're going to tell you about the four players the Chiefs signed, as I kind of alluded to it earlier in the show. Four signings to futures contracts. We're going to tell you what that means and break it all down for you on who they sign. But before that, i got to tell you about a super nice deal where you can go get a Kansas City Chiefs hat and shirt for a price of just 25% off. It's pretty dang good. You can get this yellow Chiefs shirt, the red Chiefs hat. It's honestly nice. You don't see many yellow Chiefs shirts. And right now, it's 25% off, usually around $50. It's less than 40. Go check it out at chatsports.com slash KC Combo. I'm telling you, it's a good time to get your Chiefs gear as we head into playoff season. You can wear it loud and proud as the Chiefs hopefully march their way to another Super Bowl. You can go to get this link in the comment section and in the description where you can go find this, click on it. You'll get that 25% off for the Chiefs hat and t-shirt combo. So make sure you go check it out. Let's talk about these four sightings the Chiefs had as we head into the second half of this show. As there was four guys. It was Ian Book, a quarterback, Jacob Copeland, Hassan Hall, and Jordan Smith. The most notable of that probably being Ian Book. That's the name you'd recognize. And obviously, you see the thing there. Future deals. You've heard me say it. Future deals. Jace, what the heck do you mean? They signed them, but what, 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 what does future mean? Well, here's basically what it means. It's coming from the NFL saying, once a player signs one of these contracts... They are on the NFL's reserve slash futures list, and they are not free agents to negotiate with other teams as they are under contract, even though the league year has not kicked in yet. So basically all this means is the Chiefs have signed four players to their 90-man roster for this upcoming offseason. Already being Ian Book, Jacob Copeland, Hassan Hall, and Jordan Smith. Copeland being the wide receiver that you kind of saw. And then Hassan Hall, kind of like his shiftiness from what we've seen, Jordan Smith, uh, the defensive end. Lots of moving parts around here. I think we got to mostly look at the most interesting one, and that has to be Ian Book. Obviously, Copeland and Hassan Hall have positives, but these guys are going to be looking for a roster spot on the 53-man team coming up in this August. So long way from that, but they're going to get a head start as they signed already and will be with the Chiefs on the practices, kind of doing all that stuff. Ian Book, though, the one I want to mention because uh, Blaine Gabbert is the backup right now, and then you kind of behind there, it's you have the rookie Ladukin, or excuse me, the second year Ladukin, but are you going to keep him? Do you like him enough? Do you want a fourth guy? Are you going to let Blaine Gabbert go? Well, Ian Book could be the guy to kind of fill that role. He's only played one game in his NFL career. It was with the Saints. He had 135 yards and two interceptions, although, again, it was his first game of his NFL career. And uh, as a Saints player, I'm sure it's pretty hard to kind of go play in the Superdome in your first game. So overall, I, I think I like Ian Book. I think he could potentially be a guy to stay on this roster. But it may be a similar situation to Bouchel, a Bouchel and how he could maybe just get cut later in the season. We'll see, though. Again, we don't really know what exactly is going to happen with these guys until August. But four guys that are already on the quote-unquote 90-man for this 2024 offseason. And uh, I, I like the four, getting ahead of the game. Brett Veach, obviously, doing his job. And so hopefully he continues it throughout the offseason with free agents and trades and uh, making a good draft pick as well. So we'll hopefully see some more from that from Brett Veach. Going into more some Dolphins news here. Uh, if you missed it, we've talked about it a couple times on our live show if you missed that. But the Dolphins signed veteran pass rusher Justin Houston. Now, of course, Miami's been banged up in pretty much every facet on the defensive side of the ball. And Houston, although uh, older, does bring an experience level to this team that uh, was, was kind of there, but, but not exactly. His career stats over 170 games is pretty good. 112 sacks, 
185 QB hits, uh, nothing, to sh nothing too shabby, but at the same time, you have to remember this guy is not what he used to be. Uh, he said he wanted to sign with a contender after he was uh, g gone off the Panthers, so uh, he did do that, but uh, we'll have to see what exactly it means. Now, the funny thing about this, though, we already know that the Dolphins have Melvin Ingram uh, and, <laughs> and Emmanuel Ogba. Well, guess what? Emmanuel Ogba, Melvin Ingram, and Justin Houston all played for Kansas City at one point in their career. So now the top three quote-unquote edge rushers, obviously, uh, they're going to be playing a lot of different positions with the basic uh, injury issues, let's just call it that. It probably is more than that at this point. But uh, the top three guys are going to be all guys who have played with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Kind of funny, but at the same time, given you have that kind of knowledge of it, I would have to say it helps the game planning in a way because you can understand their strengths, their weaknesses, and obviously they're not the same players as when they played with Reed and with Mahomes, but you have to understand, okay, what are their tendencies? Are they, do they have some ticks that we know about? Is there something that when we had them, we knew, okay, I can tell he's going to coverage by doing that, or I can tell he's doing this by that. There's a lot of ways you can kind of digest this, and again, I think the biggest thing with going into this game Try and get these guys into coverage. Obviously a little bit harder with Houston, but with Ingram, he was in coverage, I'm going to say three, four, maybe five times in that Bills game, and it did not go well. So if you can stack three receivers on the left side or wherever, wherever Ingram is, and then put Kelsey on there as well, and just put a lone receiver out to the right, say Rasheed Rice by himself, you got two options. You're going to have a either one-on-one -on -one Rasheed Rice down the field with probably Jalen Ramsey, uh, but obviously I think Lajari Sneed's better, whatever. And then you got Travis Kelsey, who most likely will be going against Melvin Ingram. So there's a lot of game planning you can do here with Andy Reid and the Chiefs with this kind of new whole style of basically Miami Dolphins defense that you do not play in week nine. I want you to predict the score for the Chiefs versus Dolphins game. We're coming up on a Thursday here today, which means, guess what? It's two days from game day. Two days from the Chiefs hopefully extending their season, but uh, not to be the, the devil's advocate here, but at the same time, could be two days away from ending their season as well. But let's hope they don't, and let's predict the score in the comment section with the Chiefs win. Go down there, get me your score predictions. I want to hear what Chiefs Kingdom is thinking as we head closer to this game. Now, once again, if you cannot watch the game Saturday, we got you covered. Don't worry, and don't go anywhere else. Subscribe right now to the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. You can go down. We're going to have that in the comments. You can also have that little red subscribe button. Just click that. You'll be subscribed. And if you want to go even further, click that little bell that you see. You're going to turn on notifications, and you're going to get a notification 30 minutes before we go live. Plan is to go live right now at 6 p.m. Central Time on Saturday evening before that wild card matchup of the Chiefs versus the Dolphins. We're going to have you covered on all that play-by-play -play stats, updates, everything, plus some fun and some cheering on our Kansas City Chiefs. We appreciate you making it through this video, and I, as always, Chiefs Kingdom, peace out.